Massachusetts. He recalls the long wait trying to complete a call to his family in Haiti. After a long wait, he finally spoke to his mother and found out that his family was okay. He wasn't doing along very well with them at the time, but after the long wait to find out they were okay, he realized that he truly cares and loves them. How were earthquakes created? The earth's crust is made up of many plates. Divergent boundaries are where plates divide. Convergent boundaries are where they collide. Transform boundaries are where they slide. Underneath the plate is molten rock. The molten rock moves and this moves the plates. Sometimes plates move into each other and get stuck. One or both plates finally break from the pressure building up. When the plates break and move them, the surface of the earth shakes and breaks up, causing an earthquake. The energy release is called a seismic plate. Earthquake magnitude is a measure of the seismic energy released by the earthquake. In the past, the measure used was the Richter scale. This measure is being replaced by the moment magnitude scale. The MMS scale is a number between 1 and 9.9. The measure on the start is minor at the low end and severe to total destruction at 9.9. Earthquakes are also measured by their intensity. Intensity is a description of damage and destruction. Because they are based on observation, measurements of intensity are not as accurate as measures of magnitude. The exact center of an earthquake is determined when there are at least three different locations where seismic data is being recorded. Scientists put the information from these three locations on a map and use various measures to determine the center of the earthquake. This center is called the epicenter. Now I would like to discuss an example of a specific earthquake. This earthquake is known as the Great Alaska Earthquake of 1964. This earthquake happened on March 27, 1964 at 5.36 p.m. local time when the North American plate sprang back after being compressed for hundreds of years by the Pacific plate. This is called a convergent boundary because the plates are moving in and squishing together. It was, and still is, the second most powerful earthquake ever recorded. It registered 9.2 on the Richter scale. The strongest earthquake ever recorded was in 1960 in Chile. It registered 9.5 on the Richter scale. The Great Alaska earthquake created a tsunami which killed 119 people in all. The waves in Alaska reached 220 feet in some areas and killed 103 people in the state of Alaska. The tsunami also killed 16 people in California and Oregon. Reports of property damage were reported as far away as Hawaii. An important result of the Great Alaskan earthquake is that it changed the way scientists explain earthquakes. The scientific view at the time described earthquakes being caused by vertical faults. Vertical faults have walls that move side to side, not up and down. A geologist named George Packer discovered that the Alaska earthquake was created by horizontal technique, not vertical faults. In the same way, scientists had known that earthquakes and tsunamis were related in some way, but didn't know exactly how. What they learned about plate tectonics and tsunamis from this earthquake is still being used today in earthquake analysis. There are several ways people can be warned about an earthquake. One is to listen to the news on the radio. Another is to watch the news on TV. Others include sirens, like tornado sirens, computers, and phones. These are some ways people can learn about an earthquake. There are many ways to be prepared for an earthquake. Earthquake preparedness is about safety information in the event of an earthquake. Although we can't predict earthquakes at this time, we know where they have occurred before and we can prepare people in these areas to deal with this type of emergency. Some examples of preparedness would be knowing the evacuation plans of buildings that you are in regularly, keeping a flashlight, having emergency quantities of food and water, and having a hand crank radio. Don't put heavy items like bookcases and mirrors over beds and couches. Once an earthquake starts, Stay away from windows because of broken glass, and don't use elevators. If you are outside when an earthquake starts, find a spot away from buildings and power lines. Lay on the ground until the shaking stops. After the earthquake, you have to treat each aftershock as if it is a new earthquake. 
Listen on your hand crank radio for updated information and instructions. Fire is the most common hazard, so look for the so look for and extinguish small ones, but leave the big ones for the authorities. The American Red Cross has a website called Safe and Well. If your city or your town has experienced any kind of disaster, one can register on this website, www.safeandwell.com, to let your family and friends know that you are safe. You can also register by calling 1-886-GET-INFO. And pray to God for strength. Many people blame God for events such as an earthquake, but I would tell them that God does love them. He just allows these things to happen to make us stronger and better people. Sometimes, when we are put through a trial, like an earthquake, it is also for others who bad us. They see how we react, good or badly, and become closer to God by praying for us or seeing our hope and faith. You may be sad and cry about the people you lost about the Maybe sad and cry about the people you lost during the emergency, but never forget that your guardian angel is always with you and you always have God by your side. Even though these times may be hard, God knows how much we can handle, and He will never give us more than we can endure. In conclusion, even though people get hurt or die, we can't prevent destructive events like earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanoes. It's just when nature dies.